cold coffee. Mm. The last big project I worked on was a big urban landscape painting, you know, with a building and two big trees. If you want to see the video, I will link it up here. What I thought I could do is try to work a little bit more on this series because it was such a fun series to create. I would like to have about 10 artworks, at least, in this style because eventually it would be nice to try to have a small exhibition like in a coffee shop or something. I would like to have that option. I don't know if I'm gonna do it, but I would like to try at least. I decided to work on two smaller artworks because the first one I did was really huge and I quickly found out that a frame that size is very expensive. At first, my plan was to hire a company that was specialized in making these like handmade colorful frames. But for that size, it was like $230 or something, which I totally get. It's like a one person company and their prices are fair. It's just for me at this point, it's not, it's not something that I want to pay for now. Like eventually if I sell these artworks and everything, then yes, for sure. But now I'm just fronting all the money and I'm not even sure I'm going to sell them. So eh, I want to wait. So what I decided instead is I would buy a frame. It was a Black Friday sale or something like that. So it was really cheaper than what it would have been usually. It was, I think, $50 instead of $75. And I also got this mat here. See how big it is? It's huge. So the frame is a bit bigger than this. And it's this. Oh, I can show it to you. Okay, excuse me, I'm in my pajamas. I didn't think you would notice, but... Now you know. Okay, so this is the frame. I got it from opposite wall. They're, uh, I don't know, I don't know where they're based exactly, but I've seen them a lot on Instagram. A lot of local Instagrammers that I follow have collaborated with them. So I've, I've known about them for a while. So I decided to take advantage of the sale and get myself a frame. And I thought maybe I could paint this frame. I could paint the mat. I could make my own artwork using this frame and put the painting in it. So it would be complete. My idea was for the artwork to be the painting and the frame, like both of them would combine to create a final piece. So I wanted the frame to be artsy as well. So that was my thinking. But first what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put the painting in this frame and just see how it looks, just like that. And, um, and then we'll see if we go through with that plan of painting the frame, painting the mat and creating another art piece with it. But I think it would be fun. Just, I, I saw this, this frame, it looks like it's really good quality. It looks really solid, it's oak wood. And um, I haven't touched it, so I don't know if it's real wood or not. I'm not sure. It looks like it is. It wasn't that cheap, but it was a lot cheaper than it would have been if it wasn't for the sale. So I figure I should, I should try to paint it and do something different with it. It won't be horrible, I think. I started working on two smaller paintings of that style. I first created a sketch in the sketchbook just to have like an idea of values and composition grossly. And I decided to use my watercolor pad that I have here. It is the Fabriano Artistico 14 by 20 watercolor paper. It's called Pressed. And what I found out with this pad is that the paper is good. It's just the size is unconventional. So when you want to find a frame for it, it's really hard and it's annoying. It's really annoying. So what I decided is I would split this page into smaller paintings, conventional sizes. So I have two, I think eight by tens here, and then I have two four by six or something like that or five by seven i'm not sure and then i have just like a square here that is not a conventional size but 
uh, yeah, I don't want to waste it. So we're still going to use it. I traced my sketch lightly on this paper. And now what I was thinking is I want to put a first layer of like bright color. Wait for that to dry and then we'll start working on it and we'll have some fun. I think the only reason why these paintings here would not be as fun for me as the other one that I did is that the other one was so big, it was so fun working that big, so you could really like do some big brush strokes, you can really have fun with like watercolor merging together and creating all these effects, so I think maybe for these we won't see all of these effects that well. But I guess we'll just have to see. I think that for these, I really have to focus on keeping the shape simple and not overdoing it. I think that's going to be the key, but we'll see. We'll start with a uh, first layer. I think that's a good start. I just woke up not too long ago, I got dressed, I ate something, I made myself a little bit cute and it's almost dark outside already. I'm telling you, I'm living in the dark. I wake up, it's dark, I go to work, I come back, it's sunny but then I go to sleep. Hmm? And this guy, he was sleeping the whole night, the whole night, the whole day. And now that I'm starting to film, then Mr. decides to wake up and scream as loud as he can. As always. Huh? As always. Oh, yes. He likes me to scratch him right here. Oh, so happy. Oh, so happy. So I was thinking I should make the most out of the light we have left for today to put the big painting that I did earlier in another video in the big frame that I bought that I showed you in this video. So let's put it in the frame and let's have a look at how it looks and see if we go through with our plan of decorating the frame and painting the mat. But first I wanted to show you a painting slash drawing that I did this week in my... Well, this sketchbook doesn't really have a name. I have some sketchbooks that have themes. If you want to know the video all about it, I'm going to link it up here. I decided to use my watercolor pencils. Sorry, I can't speak. I'm having trouble to think. I'm using my water... I decided to use my watercolor pencils. I recently did a video in which I did a rating of a bunch of art supplies that I own and I, I rated these Derwent watercolor pencils that I have and I put them in a not so good category. Uh, not bad, but not that good either. And the reason why is that I thought that they left marks when I was drawing and wetting them. But then somebody told me, sometimes that's what you want. And it made me think about them in a whole different way. And I decided to embrace that fact. And now I think I love them. I think I need all of the colors because you can have a much sketchier look with them. With all the marks that they leave, it's so pretty. And for me, like I'm all about texture. So it's a way to add even more texture to your artwork. So. It's really nice because I, I wetted some areas and I left some areas a bit more like in the raw form and some areas I did kind of a mix of the two and I really love the result. I'm going to show you some close-ups but 
truly I want to love all my art supplies and I want to use all my art supplies because I don't really want them to go to waste and I know I have a lot of art supplies I should probably stop buying art supplies although there's one paint I need to buy which is ultramarine blue yeah I, if you watch my my palette video the one where I created the perfect watercolor travel palette I decided instead of using ultramarine blue for my warm blue, I decided to use my identron blue. And a couple of people suggested that I use ultramarine blue because it's the best. It's very useful to create some mixes. So I think. Oh, hey, Charlotte! Hey, you can see. You can see. Let me create. I decided I might have to go get this one, ultramarine blue. But for a good cause, you know, I'm not going to get anything that's not on my list except maybe more watercolor pencils. I mean... Here we go, the frame is pretty big, but this is what the painting looks like in it. And I think there's too much white around. So I'm going to go through with my idea of painting the mat. Then I'm going to keep the frame in its wood color for now, because I want to go one step at a time. I want to start with the mat, see how it goes, see what it looks like. And then I'm going to decide if I keep the frame that way or if I paint it or if I just dye it or whatever, varnish it. So we'll see. So one thing at a time, but it's nice, but it's going to be even better, I think, with the, a colored mat. What I did is I started by putting a first layer of cerulean blue on the reverse side because I wanted to see what it would look like. I wanted to kind of use that side to practice. I have no idea how this paper is going to react because it's not made for this. I see that the paper is not reacting too well. I don't know if it's the the movement of my brush, you know, and the, the rubbing of my brush on the paper. Um, I kind of, I'm hesitating now. I figured that if I did ruin it, it's not that big of a deal because I can just buy another one. It's not too expensive. It's just, I had a specific idea in mind of what I wanted to do. And now I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do it. I think maybe I need to put less water because in the areas where I put less water, the paper is, is looking better. 
yeah we'll just wait for this to dry the other problem is that this paper is kind of buckling now i don't know if it's going to dry flat or not so this is something we're gonna have to see What if I try to splash some paint on it? Well, the mess I made on the floor is drying. I thought I could continue working on the other paintings that I started um, not too long ago a kind of urban landscape with everything man-made not painted so a single color with, with some texture of course so I thought I could work on it and then we'll see if we can salvage that mat but I'm already having ideas of what I could do next time that I'm doing this, that I'm painting a mat I think I need to use a medium that uses less water so the paper doesn't pile. But you live and learn. So let's let's do some work. So now I'm putting the masking fluid over the parts I want to protect. So these are all the man-made areas. And this one we have some poles, like uh, lighting poles, telephone poles, telephone poles? No, I don't think so. Just like random poles, I guess, that you find in the street. So I'm trying to be precise in my lines. Somebody suggested to me that I mix my masking fluid with a non-staining watercolor. Because right now it's transparent and it's one of my struggles is that I don't really see where I put it and I would like to see it better. I think it would be helpful, but it's just, I don't know about the logistic of doing that. It looks like a really good idea, but I don't want it to dry. Like, let's say I put it in a little container on the side. I pour a little bit of masking fluid and then I mix it. I don't want it to, yeah, to dry. Okay, so I put the painting on top of the mat just to have a general idea of what it looks like. And what I like to do is create some white lines. I think the color, the blue color is fine. I was thinking of using my golden high flow acrylics to attenuate some blue spots that I think are too intense. And also maybe I can create the lines with this. So we'll see, this is the practice side. And I think that since it has dried, it dried flat. So that was one of my worries. So we're good for that. And I thought that the paper was piling too much, but I don't think it's as bad as I thought. I'm pretty happy about it. So we're gonna continue doing our tests, then we're gonna let it dry and we're gonna move on to the, the right side. Okay, I wanted to show you what I did so far. I did lots of stuff. I wanted to test out a couple of things. So first, you saw me do some kind of white lines, but turns out they don't show that well. So it's not exactly what I thought was gonna happen. Then I decided, let me try them, but with the cerulean blue. 
and I do not like that at all also I want it to have a low contrast texture and I feel like this is too much too much contrast because I still want the eye to go to the painting and not to the embellishments then I decided let me try to create some lines with some thicker acrylic so I used white acrylic to create this and I thought it was okay I wasn't exactly like I wanted something that was more organic I don't know if you know what I mean but like I wanted to have a look of like worms moving or like I don't know something more organic than this so I did this which was a step in the right direction but then I did these kinds of like chains slash worm slash DNA stuff it's not really DNA but I really like the look of it and I did quite a lot and then I decided this is going to be enough for me to see if I like it then I just took a brush and I stamped it everywhere and you get this kind of like this texture that is a bit more subtle but I think I still like it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave all of this to dry. I'm going to put my painting on top there and I'm going to see what I prefer. And then I think we'll be set. The only thing is if I'm doing these kinds of chain stuff, I think I need a marker. I need an acrylic marker because with this paint, it's too hard and it leaves these lines and like this raising of the paint which i don't really like and i think that with a marker it would be like a thousand times faster too but we'll see we'll see what we do Okay guys, this is the final for now result. Now what I'm debating is, what do I do with this frame? Do I keep it this color? Do I put a tint so it looks like this? Because I think that this color would look good with the blue. Yeah, it would look good, I think. Or maybe a bit darker like this. Do we like the blue mat? I think it's good. I wanted it to stay low contrast. Maybe eventually I'm going to get like a Molotov white marker so I can create some subtle lines. Initially, I wanted the frame to be blue also, but like a darker blue. But now I'm wondering, would that be too much, too much blue? I think for now what we'll do is we're just going to leave it like this. We are going to think it over for a couple of days and then we'll decide what we do. I don't think it's a decision I can take right now. Other than that, I started working on these paintings. So far I really like the looseness of it. I like the way the paint blended together. So we're going to finish these today, I think, I hope. and. 
I want to say goodbye now. We're still going to see some footage of me finishing these paintings, but the light is, is getting dimmer and dimmer as it does in the winter time. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any suggestions for me for things I could do with this, please let me know. I know that painting a mat is unconventional and also I don't know if I committed a grave mistake. Like, is it going to destroy my painting? I know nothing, okay? <laughs> I'm just trying stuff. Okay, so thank you for watching and thank you for the suggestions that I know I'm going to get in the comments. And if you like this video, please leave a like, leave comment and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I would love to have you back. Okay, take care. I want to use some acrylic inks to do the sky because something that I've been meaning to try for a while now. I've always like stuck with the watercolor. But now I feel like we need to try it. It's pretty good. Just dilute it a little bit. Oh my god, that's a lot. <laughs> a lot of white. I think that's better though, because it's supposed to be like a super bright day.